Okay, good morning space chums. Uh, today we're going to take a little look at tonight's moon. We're going to take a short tour of the lunar surface and highlight some of the things that you could see if you're out uh, moon gazing tonight. It's Wednesday, August the 6th, 2025. And today we're going to delve in just some of the secrets of our lunar neighbor. So today the moon is in its waxing gibbous phase. It's approximately 92% illuminated. So this means that this current phase will light up nearly the entire visible, visible side of the moon. But the terminator uh, to our left is a sharp divide between light and dark. Now that clings to the western edge and it does create some nice dramatic shadows and highlights which are ideal for viewing with binoculars or even a small telescope. So the moon itself, it's currently about 395,000 kilometers from Earth. Uh, it's a bit beyond the average distance and it makes it uh, subtly smaller in tonight's sky. Okay, this should take around 10 minutes uh, to complete our little tour. And we are going to focus on objects that are close to the Terminator line. And we will explore a selection of fascinating features going from north to south. We will cover Remus Sharp, Herodotus Crater, Marius Crater, Hanstein Crater, and Flamsteed G Crater. Each offers insights into the moon's volcanic and impact history, and hopefully there'll be some uh, features that you may not have heard of before. So if you can, get ready with your telescopes later on, and we'll begin our uh, little tour. Okay, so we're going to begin in the northern reaches, reaches of the lunar surface, and that's at Rima Sharp. Now this is a long, winding, sinuous reel visible with a telescope as a dark serpentine grove. It snakes across the plains near the Terminator. Now this impressive feature stretches about 320 kilometers in length with widths varying but typically they are about a few com uh, kilometers wide. Now depths can reach up to several hundred meters in places though it shallows towards the end. So this particular, particular area was formed as an ancient lava channel during the volcanic eruption around 3 billion years ago. It's a remnant of flowing basaltic magma, uh, magma that uh, eroded the surface before cooling. Now it is named after nearby Sharp Crater, which honors Abraham Sharp. He was a 17th, 18th century uh, English mathematician and astronomer. He was known for his precise astronomical uh, instruments. Remus Sharp is actually part of a larger, larger system. Its surrounding area lies in the North Oceanus Procolarium, which extends southward from near Crater Sharp towards Rima Marin. And that is amid smooth mare plains which are dotted with subtle domes and ridges from volcanic activity. Okay, let's begin to move south. And here we encounter Herodotus Crater. Now this is a prominent bowl-shaped feature. It's easily spotted with binoculars as a shadow depression along the Terminator. Now this crater measures around 35 kilometers in diameter and it's 1.5 kilometers deep. It has a floor flooded by dark basaltic lava after the initial impact which occurred about 3.8 billion years ago. Now this was during the Imbrium period and this impact crater would have been created by a meteoroid that collision that excavated the surface and later modified by volcanic infill. Now it is named for Herodotus. Now he was an ancient Greek historian, often called the father of history. Uh, this is because of his writings around 484 to 425 BC. And it is a tribute to early scholarship. Now the surrounding area is on a low shelf in Oceanus Proclarium. Uh, to the east shines the bright Aristarchus crater, 
west lies Schiaparelli uh, across the mare south is the solitary lunar dome for the Dottus Omega and north begins the dramatic Phallus uh, Shrotteri, a deep valley nicknamed the Cobra Head at its start. So we'll proceed south and here we spot Marius Crater. It's a well-defined circular depression. It's visible with binoculars as a dark floor spot, contrasting with the nearby hills. This crater does span around 41 kilometers across and plunges 1.7 kilometers deep. It's an impact crater formed from a high speed asteroid collision around three to four billion years ago. This floor was subsequently flooded by basaltic lava flows and it is named after Simon Marius. Uh, he was a 17th century German astronomer who controversially claimed to have discovered Jupiter's moons independently of uh, Galileo. So it's a nice little nod to astronomical history. Their surrounding region in Oceanus Proclarium, and it does feature the extensive Marius Hills to the west and to the north. A cluster of uh, over 100 volcanic domes spread across more than 100 kilometers. It was possibly formed by fiscus magma extrusions, and to the southwest is Reiner Crater, and east to southeast lies Kepler with its beautiful ray system. Okay, as we uh, progress further south, we reach Flamsteed G. Now this is a small satellite crater, best viewed with a telescope as a tiny pit amongst the plains close to the Terminator. Now this diminutive feature is only about four kilometers in diameter and its depth is actually not well documented, but it is shallow, uh, like similar small impacts. And it would have been formed by a small meteoroid strike in the relatively uh, recent lunar pass. Now, as a satellite of the main Fl Flamsteed crater, it is named under the convention of lettering appendages to the parent, which honors John Flamsteed, who was the first astronomer royal of England and that was from 1646 to 1719. He catalogued nearly 3,000 stars. And the surrounding area is within Oceanus Proclarium. It's near the main 20 kilometer Flancy crater to the north, which sits inside the larger buried ring of a Flamsteed P, which is marked by low ridges. East to the east, lies the dark Grimaldi crater and north northwest is the flooded Latrone Bay. And wrapping up in the south is Hamstein crater. Now appearing in binoculars as a crisp rimmed basin near the Terminator's glow, it boasts a four, 45 kilometer diameter and 1.3 kilometer depth. It originated as an impact crater from a meteoroid collision during the Imbrium uh, era, and that was about 3.8 billion years ago. And this was named after Christopher Hanstein, a 19th century Norwegian astronomer and geophysicist who was renowned for his work on Earth's magnetism. Its surroundings are near the southwest edge of Oceanus Proclarium, southeast is the flooded Billy Crater, while a 25 kilometer wide riddle, Rima Hanstein, parallels the southwest wall. Southeast rises Mons Hanstein, a roughly triangular uh, volcanic, volcanic mound about 30 kilometers across. It's thought to be an extrusion of a fiscus lava. So hope you enjoyed our very quick tour of the lunar surface tonight. If you can, get your scope out, get your binoculars out and have a look at what's happening in our night sky. Hopefully you have learned something new about the lunar surface in this short video. So please do like, share and subscribe, if you, uh, particularly if you liked any particular feature in the video or maybe there's a lunar feature you think we should look at. From the winding rim of sharp to the petite 
Flamstead G. Now these features showcase the moon's volcanic and cratered legacy. So if you are observing tonight, do share your views in the comments. Hopefully we'll try and do this again tomorrow and pick some new uh, features on the lunar surface to have a look at. So clear skies and keep gazing upward folks.